Shalom, my name is Tirza Lewis with Derek Akkad, Israeli Beit Midrash. This is Derek Akkad Talmidah, Torah for Women. We will look at the women in the Bible and examine their lives and the lessons that we can learn from them. Today we will be looking at Miriam. Just as with the forefathers in the Bible, the mothers of our people, the women of the scriptures, show us both good and negative examples. Their lives aren't glamorized. We see their humanity in their actions. This gives us hope that even though we may have some actions that we aren't proud of, there is still hope that we can serve the Almighty and move on towards perfection in Him. Miriam is going to be the first woman that we look at in this series. She is the mother of the official nation of Israel. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's look at Exodus chapter 2. And a man of the house of Levi went and took as a wife a daughter of Levi, so that the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was beautiful, sorry, that he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him, daubed it with asphalt and pitch, and put the child in it, and laid it by the reeds by the river banks. And his sister stood afar off to know what would be done to him. Then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, and her maidens walked along the riverside. And when they saw the ark among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it. And when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept. So she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the maiden went and called the child's mother. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. And the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. So she called his name Moshe, or Moses, saying, Because I drew him out of the water. That was Exodus chapter 2, verses 5 through 10. So imagine what it must have been like for Miriam to watch her brother float amongst the reeds, slowly, slowly, to where Pharaoh's daughter was bathing. Um, this wasn't like, um, I believe, the, the movie The Prince of Egypt where there were crocodiles and different animals coming up. But this was a very um, strategically planned thing where they put this ark um, that was waterproofed um, amongst the reeds so that the reeds would slow the ark down, right? And they knew that this was the time that Pharaoh's daughter would be bathing. So he wasn't just going to die in the water. In fact, when we look at the word ark, it, an ark, just as in Noah's ark, it is a, um, it's not an instrument of execution, but it's an instrument of deliverance. So she put her child in this instrument of deliverance and placed him amongst the reeds where she knew he would float down to where Pharaoh's daughter was. So think about Miriam. You know, she, she's watching him float and slowly to where Pharaoh's daughter is bathing. She's, she's carefully placed. She's carefully positioned. She's ready for the next step of the plan, which is to speak to Pharaoh's daughter. Imagine a child speaking to royalty. Imagine anyone speaking to royalty. Um, this takes boldness on her part. You know, as a child and a slave child, especially, she speaks on behalf of her brother's life. She speaks on behalf of her mother. In fact, she speaks on behalf of the Most High and on behalf of the entire nation of Israel because this is the deliverer that the people was waiting for. Hallelujah. So this is boldness. She has a boldness about her as a child. She has a boldness about her to take the opportunity to speak to Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh's daughter um, 
in these verses, at least, she she's not thinking initially about keeping the child. She's not she's not thinking. She just says, "Oh, this must be one of the Hebrews' children." She has a compassion inside of her. There's a part in her that that sees this child and hears the voice of the child as the child weeps, and 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 she she's not at the point of saying, "I'm going to keep this child." Can somebody figure a way out for me to keep the child? But Miriam, Miriam in her discernment, right? She says, shall I go and find a nurse? So she presents an opportunity to Pharaoh's daughter to keep the child, right? She, she presents an opportunity for Pharaoh's daughter to even think about, okay, I have compassion on this child. I, I, I'm, I'm feeling drawn to this child. Okay, I am going to raise this child as my own. So we can see that Miriam was essential in the plan to bring about the deliverer Moshe, right? She was essential in this plan. Just as Miriam, the mother of Yeshua, was essential in bringing about the fulfillment of Moshe, Yeshua HaMashiach. So we have two Miriams, um, and both were prophetesses. Both heard from Yah directly. So the next time that we see Miriam in the Torah, uh, she is leading uh, the women's song and dance, celebrating the victory of the Red Sea. And we can see this in Exodus chapter 15, verses 20 to 21, where it says, And Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aharon, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out with her. Uh, after her with timbrels and with dances. And Miriam answered them, Sing unto Yahweh, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. Here we read that Miriam was a prophetess. Okay, this is where we read that she was a prophetess. Someone who spoke the direct word of Yah, who heard from Yah, right? So she is, uh, she's out singing and dancing, praising Yah and leading out the women in the praise. Um, you know, before this, it's the Song of Moses, right? Um, so, you know, reading Exodus chapter 15 is, is an excellent, um, the Song of Moses. And then we can see Miriam in the, in the reprise, the refrain, you know, that she sings with the women. So the next time that we hear about Miriam is an, uh, it's in an unfavorable light. So we're going to read Numbers chapter 12, verses 1 through 16, which is the whole chapter, Numbers chapter 12. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses, or Moshe, because of the Egyptian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Hath Yahweh indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And Yahweh heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek, above all the men, which were upon the face of the earth. And Yahweh spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Come out ye three from the tabernacle of the unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And Yahweh came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, Yahweh, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and I will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches and the similitude, uh, and, and the similitude of Yahweh shall he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of Yahweh was kindled against them and departed. And he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle. And behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us wherein we have done foolishly and wherein we have sinned let her not be as one dead of whom flesh is has half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb and Moses cried unto Yahweh saying heal her now O God O Yah I beseech thee 
And Yahweh said unto Moshe, If her father had but spit in her face, she should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out from the camp seven days, and after that let her be received in again. And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days, and the people journeyed not until Miriam was brought in again. And the people, and afterward the people uh, removed from Hazarot and pitched in the wilderness of Paran. So in these verses, we see Miriam and Aaron speak out against Moshe over this Ethiopian wife that he took. And perhaps if they would have left it at the accusation against Moshe, Yah would have left it alone. We don't know. But they took it further, saying that Yah speaks to them as well, speaks by them as well, I should say. Yah pulled the record at that point, right? He pulled up the record and he said, and he even came down in the pillar of cloud, right? And, and, you know, and this is prophetic, of course, Yah speaking to them directly. So they're all prophets. They're all prophets, including Miriam, Aaron, and, of course, Moses, right? They're all hearing from Yah right now. And so he and he speaks to them. Um, and, and he says that they and others, right, are spoken to in visions or dreams. <laughs> but But he speaks to Moses, Moshe, mouth to mouth, right? He doesn't address their issue against Moshe. He doesn't, he, I mean, he don't care necessarily about that issue. That's, that's just a small issue. But, but they, they came and they said that what's so great about this Moses, right? <laughs> we hear and speak by Yah too. And, and the Most High had to come down, right? And say, hold on, hold on. There's a difference. Recognize this difference, right? So he, he addresses their audacity to claim to be at the same prophetic level as Moshe. And Yah makes it clear that this is not the case. And as a result, Miriam is plagued with the leprosy for seven days. So that means that she has to go outside of the camp. However, you know, but the people wait for her. Everyone waits for her to come back. So no one moves. Everyone waits for the mother of Israel to come back into the camp before they move on. So it's it's an interesting thing because what happens is when we actually get the commandment that deal that uh, of how to deal with lepers when when that commandment is given and again uh, the word leper is a an English translation um, of the Hebrew zara or zarat um, and you know we we study that in depth when we get into the, the Torah portion surrounding that but when when we see that commandment, uh, the commandment given, we are actually commanded to remember Miriam um, with those sets of commandments. So we look at Deuteronomy chapter 24, verses 8 through 9. It says, Take heed in the plague of leprosy, that thou observe diligently, and do according to all that the priests, the Levites, shall teach you, as I commanded them, so ye shall observe to do. Remember what Yahweh thy Elohim did unto Miriam, by the way. After that, ye were come forth out of Egypt. Our sages teach us that leprosy, or za'arat, is the penalty for the evil tongue, or the lashon hara. So just as leprosy spreads from the host to those all around, the same is true about the evil tongue. Um, just by me speaking evil of someone, I can cause the person I'm speaking to to have a whole uh, a whole new negative view of a person, sometimes even a person that they never met, right? So uh, speaking, you know, the host, the person who's speaking in the evil tongue can spread this this um, ill report and, and this, this um, negative thought to all those around, right? So it's the same thing with leprosy. Of course, the host could spread the leprosy, right, to all those who surround. So if we have someone who's uh, speaking the evil tongue, they have to be put outside of the camp. 
Um, because when someone speaks evil or negatively to someone, those who hear it will also begin to think evil of that individual as well. It's possible to taint a person's character by just one person beginning an evil word, speaking to the next. To prevent this from happening, of course, you take them outside of the camp. The Proverbs says, we look at Proverbs 22, verse 10. It says, throw out the mocker and fighting goes too. Quarrels and insults will disappear. So we know that women in particular, uh, we're more prone, we, we're more talkative in general, again, in general terms, we're more talkative than men. You know, we have more words to say to each other. Um, and then that makes us more prone to, to speak about other people. You know, when we run out of talking about ourselves, we start talking about other people. You know, we have more relational conversations, okay? But it's important to rein in negative thoughts and negative energy before they bubble out of our mouth, okay? Uh, Numbers 20, verse 1. We're, we'll just, um, we're going to finish it up. We'll look at how Miriam died. It says, Numbers 20, verse 1, Then the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, uh, then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, into the desert of Zin uh, in the first month. And the people abode in Kadesh. And Miriam died there and was buried there. So Miriam was so important as the Ima, the, the mother of Israel, that even her death and her final resting place are recorded for us in the Torah. Okay. Um, and, and when we think about her and her role, you know, um, she wasn't out on the forefront, you know, um, she wasn't out leading people like leading armies and, and leading the nation um, in an outward sense. You know, we see her dancing and singing and leading out the women in song, but we don't really see her uh, as being like, you know, a, um, a principal figure um, as far as uh, uh, being in leadership. But when we look at a verse like Micah 6 verse 4 it says, For I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt and redeemed thee out of the house of servants. And I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. So we can see here that the, the leaders, right, that was sent out was from this family, right, which was Moses and Aaron. Aaron was his mouthpiece, right, and their sister, Miriam. So she is listed as one of the people who was at the forefront, right? But her her role, she functioned in her role, right? She functioned in her role. She didn't try to usurp authority. She didn't try to um, uh, come into, <laughs> you know, a spirit of elevating her own position and her own gifting, right? Um, and in fact, when she did start elevating herself, right? Her, her leprosy reminds us as women that we need to, to, to hold ourselves back, right? To refrain from stepping out of bounds, okay? So we can see that, you know, she was, she's our example of how to um, walk in discernment, how to, um, you know, be bold, be bold about uh, the future, of our people. Um, as women, we, we bear the future of our nation. As women, we nurture the future of our nation. If there is an enemy that tries to <laughs> cut off the future, we have to be bold, right? We have to be bold and we have to stand up for Yah and for, for uh, the child, you know, that we are nurturing. And we can see this in Miriam. And we can also see how, you know, when she did kind of, you know, get out of bounds and out of step, how Yah chastised her. And we know that Yah only chastises those who he loves, right? That's who he chastises. Um, I, I want to, um, you know, we have to make sure that what comes forth from us is both pleasant and sweet. When we look at Miriam's name, it means bitter, you know. Um, but we can see how we can learn from bitterness to be those who are sweet, right? Um, the waters of uh, of uh, Meribah, the waters 
of Marah. You know, they they were bitter, right? But they were able to be made sweet. Um, so from us, you know, we um, have to bring forth sweetness, right? Sweetness uh, must come forth from us. When we look at Ephesians chapter 5, verses 17 and 21, it says, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of Yah is, right? And do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart unto Yah, giving thanks always for all things unto Elohim and the Father in the name of our Master Yahshua HaMashiach. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of Elohim. So we can learn from Miriam that, you know, um, we can learn what it means to be mothers of the people. We can learn what it means to be nurturers. We can learn what it means to be bold. And we can learn that we have to temper out any of that bitterness, right, that might be inside of us with the spirit of Yah. Bitterness can be made sweet by the spirit of the Almighty. And we have to speak to each other, especially those of the household of faith and those that we love. We have to nurture each other, right? Um, and speak to each other in, in, in hymns and in spiritual songs and, and making melody. All of these positive things, right? Um, and not giving in to any negative spirit, any bitterness that might creep in. Yah bless.